7 p.m. Eastern Wartime. Bob Trout reporting. The Japanese have accepted our terms fully. That's the word we've just received from the White House in Washington. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the Second World War. Ladies and gentlemen, President of the United States. A short time ago, an American airplane dropped one bomb on Hiroshima. That bomb has more power than 20,000 tons of TNT. It is an atomic bomb. It is a harnessing of the basic power of the universe. Having found the atomic bomb, we have used it. It is an awful responsibility which has come to us. We thank God that it has come to us, instead of to our enemy, and we pray that he may guide us to use it in his ways and for his purposes. bomb is here. It exists. We must look to the future. Up until now, only three have been exploded, and none over the water. It is the duty of the military services to explore the military might of this new weapon. We want to be prepared for any use of atomic energy that may become necessary, whether offensive or defensive. Out of Washington comes the story of Operation Crossroads. The Special Committee on Atomic Energy checks final plans for the forthcoming atom bomb tests at sea in which 100 warships will be used. Vice Admiral Blandy tells the committee, The site of the test will be Bikini Atoll in the Marshalls Group. Bikini is situated in the Marshall Islands. It's uh, between 160 and 170 degrees east longitude. The lagoon is 27 miles uh, long, that is from east to west, and a little more than half of that north to south. Kalungur korang kan pangan kan cuan dari Amerika, eh jawa ngah, eh ngah ilah ada urin puding, eh cerok baru cuan yang lalu. Yang langgan kami cakap orang cakap ini lagi apa, ini orang cerok cuan paman ayat lagi. Eh macam kenal orang, ini orang nan kuah ni lagi apa, eh jangan kamu ni cuan, cerok cuan paman, train cuan cuan paman yang cuan ini, pergi Amerika kan, bagai nak jual balik. Now then, James, tell them, please, that uh, the United States government now wants to turn this great destructive power 
into something for the benefit of mankind. And that these experiments here at Bikini are the first step in that direction. <laughs> Crossroads, scene 25, take one. Well, now then, James, will you tell them that the United States government now wants to turn this great destructive force into something good for mankind, something good for mankind, something good for mankind. All right, is that all? Okay, got it.
we really and truly didn't know what was coming up because we were told that we were going on a test. And the test there would be uh, nothing uh, to be concerned with, uh, don't bother about anything, there's uh, no restrictions on us. So um, uh, do as you're told and there won't be any harm come to anybody. Ahead, Operation Crossroads at Bikini. We are speaking to you from the island of Bikini. We think this is a rather auspicious occasion because of the fact that this is probably the first time, and no doubt the last, that a radio station will be broadcasting from Bikini. This island has been read about, been told about, and you've seen pictures of it in the papers, in magazines, and over the radio for the past several months. Now this is an actual broadcast from this location. When we arrived there, we found out that the weather was uh, a little on the warm side, running about 100 degrees with about 100% humidity. So it was uh, pretty warm and humid. So the, the less clothing we could wear, the better off we were, or at least we thought we were at the time. So we started trying to get into the water to swim a little bit. And we did that with no problems. So it was swimming and eating a lot of ice cream and, and you know, just anything to keep our minds occupied at the time. Well, I know it's certainly grand to see some uh, femininity out here. Because, uh, as you said, 42,000 men and 22 women, the uh, competition is quite great. And one dog I see standing right here. And then, to the side of blue lagoon, I kissed you. It was in September. The men cut up and act a fool, and, as boys would. Everybody was on a sort of a good attitude. I thought we were. I was. We thought it was wonderful the way they were treating us there, and and had all the ice cream we could eat, and. Uh, we had some of this, what you call this, 3-2 beer, and uh, trying to cool off with that. Well, uh, tell me, uh, Fitzgerald, how do you feel about being here? Uh, do you like the assignment? Yes, sir. Not bad at all. Uh, are you married? No, sir. Are you going to have any grandchildren to tell about this? I don't know, sir. <laughs> well, uh, let's hope you do. Uh, how old are you? Eighteen, sir. Eighteen. Um, how long you been in the service now? About four months. Sir. About four months. Well, boy, you're starting out on a real one. Well, thank you very much. For months, from Washington to the Central Pacific, plans have moved ahead on one of the most gigantic experiments the world has ever known. A joint operation this July to determine whether present sea power is obsolete. In secret files, an exhaustive schedule of planning and consultation is perfected as public interest in the vast operation mounts. In answer to repeated criticisms of what may be the greatest mass destruction in naval history, Vice Admiral W.H. Blandy says, It has been said that any reasonably industrialized nation can produce the atom bomb in a few years. I know that you would not want your homes protected by a military machine obsolete and inadequate to meet the dangers of any form of attack. May not feel the power of any Crossroads, USS Panama, Mexican UN observer, singing at church service.
Congressman Engel, what interests you most about this test? I am interested in the effect of the blast upon the animals, because by studying such effects, we will learn approximately what may happen to humans in the event they are exposed to atomic attack. We were told that uh, do as you're ordered and nothing will become of it and nothing will happen to you. And that's exactly what we did. Being a country boy, uh, like the majority of us were, we didn't know of any type of a bomb. We really didn't know it was a type of bomb that they were exploded over there. We scientists who release this immense power have overwhelming responsibility to bring realization to America that mankind's destiny is being decided today, now, this moment. We ask your help in this fateful moment as sign that we scientists do not stand alone. I agree. For late reports on the atom bomb test at Bikini, stay tuned to your mutual station. We take you now to New York. This uh, Security Council chamber is packed as it's never been before to listen to this historic declaration as the government of the United States is about to present its plan for the world control of atomic energy. And now we give you Mr. Bernard Baruch, the American delegate to the United Nations Commission on Atomic Energy. My fellow members, of the United Nations Atomic Energy Commission and my fellow citizens of the world. We are here to make a choice between the quick and the dead. That is our business. Behind the black portent of the new atomic age lies a hope which, seized upon with faith, can work our salvation. If we fail, then we have damned every man to be the slave of fear. Now, if ever, is the time to act for the common good. We of this nation, realizing the heavy obligations upon us, arising from our possession of the means of producing the bomb and from the fact that it is a part of our armament, are prepared to make our full contribution toward effective control of atomic energy. The plan Baruch'a and по существу и по форме не отвечает интересам Объединенных Наций. Существует и другой план в отношении атомной бомбы, предложенный Советским Союзом. В основе этого плана лежит совсем другая установка. Мы, советские люди, не связываем своих расчетов на будущее с использованием атомной бомбы. Mr. Molotov's speech indicated distrust 
and misunderstanding of the motives of the United States and of other members of the United Nations. Our motives in war and peace we leave to the judgment of history. Now from the ship carrying scientific observers and UN representatives, here is ABC correspondent Cleet Roberts. Go ahead, Bikini. This is Cleet Roberts reporting from Bikini Lake. A little over an hour ago, Vice Admiral Blandy announced that the A bomb will definitely be dropped tomorrow. The crew will begin leaving the target ship. We were in the lagoon. Uh, on the uh, morning of uh, July the 1st, and we were told then that we were moving out and we would uh, go out to uh, the mothership, which we call Mount McKinley, which was uh, about nine miles out. And uh, that was early in the morning. We started out of the lagoon. We were the last ship out of the lagoon, the last personnel in the lagoon. So we wasn't afraid of anything because we knew at the time, or felt at the time, why uh, we were well protected. We had nothing to be afraid of. Wagon <laughs> Major Bruning of the Netherlands. Good morning. Colonel Ragab of Egypt. Good morning. Military attaché in Washington. See you. Colonel Osman of Egypt. How do you do? Good to see you, Dr. Carrillo of Mexico. How do you do? Good Colonel Gonzalez of Mexico. Good morning. Good to see you. Vice Air Marshal Stepman. How do you do? Good to see you. Major General Luton. Yes. Canada. Dr. Alexandra of Russia. How do you do? Dr. Major Rakoff, General Ho of China, military attaché in Washington also. Commander Spurgeon of Australia, Dr. Dr. Bienkowski of Poland, Dr. Sultan of Poland, Dr. Goldschmidt of France, Dr. Bestwick of England, Member of Parliament. I know that you'll be interested, uh, as I will be, to see these tests tomorrow. And I know that you are aware that uh, they are conducted in not any frivolous or casual fashion, that uh, they do not constitute in any gesture of war or of aggression or threat. Thank you very much. ABC, this is Lee Van Adder reporting from Air Force Atomic Headquarters at Kwajalein. It is only a few hundred yards from where I am speaking to a certain atomic bomb, the Bikini Bomb. It is a novel and yet somehow satisfying sensation to know that bomb is both near and here. That sensation of something more powerful than anything man has known before being present on this incongruously tiny coral atoll in the middle of the Pacific. Experiment provides experience. Experience fortifies theory. Knowledge is power. The way is clear. The challenge strong. The duty inescapable. We must have the facts. Common sense calls for the facts. Now. Anxiously waiting for this is Mrs. Carolyn Swancott, mother of Major Woodrow Swancott, 
pilot of Dave's dream, the B-29, which will drop the bikini bomb. Mrs. Swancott, do you feel a little anxious along with him? I certainly do, and I, but I have much faith and confidence in Woody and know that he will do the very best that he can. Of course he will. And may the grace of God be with him and his crew. Mrs. Swancott is uh, browsing through Don't the letter. Don't worry about me, Mother. Believe me, when I say we're in no danger at all in the test, no matter what you have heard, and have confidence in me, I'll be okay. Ladies and gentlemen, today is Able Day, the day that the fourth atomic bomb ever dropped in history, is scheduled to explode over a ghost fleet in Bikini Lagoon. In just a few moments, the Super Fortress carrying that bomb will take off from Kwajalein to begin a four-hour flight to H-Hour. For an eyewitness report of this historic event, we take you now to Kwajalein. This is W.W. Chaplin on a hangar roof with lifting the atom bomb plane runway on Kwajalein Island. The time has come to send the atom bomb by air to bikini to burst in cosmic fury over an anchored guinea pig sea with American, Japanese, and German naval vessels. The most explosive experiment in history is about to begin. Now the plane is swinging around. Now I think he's ready to go. He's giving her the gun. The atom bomb plane, Dave's dream, is starting down the runway. 50 miles an hour, I should say. Now 60. Run it, Ray. Probably 80 miles now. Probably up to 100. 120, and this is just about where he starts up in the air. He's up. The plane is airborne. The atom bomb is in the air on its way to the TV. For the greatest experiment, the most explosive experiment in history. At this time, NBC interrupts its regular program schedule to bring you a history-making broadcast, the actual dropping of the bomb at Bikini. In a matter of minutes now, an Army super fortress will drop that bomb on target ships in Bikini Lagoon. There are those who predict it may be the last such test, if nations now can agree to outlaw the bomb. The United Nations Atomic Energy Commission now is analyzing that problem, and the world waits to see whether there can be a compromise between our own plan for controlling atomic energy and that of Soviet Russia. Aboard 22 target ships in the lagoon are the animals, which are soon to draw their last breaths for humanity. The result of what happens to war-making equipment will undoubtedly determine the course of military might for generations it is now 30 seconds to zero time. Put on goggles or turn away. Do not remove goggles or face burst until 10 seconds after the first light. Uh, we're all getting our goggles adjusted now because we expect to hear the signal from the uh, bombardier at any moment. Crossroads, scene one, take one, a day burst, USS Panamint. At that time, they started the countdown. And we wasn't really sure because they said it would be a big bomb and it would show off a, a lot of heat and we would feel a shock wave. Be prepared for that. And they told us that uh, be sure to cover our eyes when uh, they count down to zero.
I thought it was great. I thought it was one of the greatest things I've ever seen, and it was, really. Been from the country, uh, uh, of course, I would have never had a chance to see anything like that in my lifetime. Sitting back there, seeing this huge fire rolling up into the skies, uh, it was something that was unbelievable. And anything that everybody there was saying was, ah, oh, look at there, you know. Congressman Isaac, what was your first general impression of the explosion of the atomic bomb a few moments ago? It was one of keen disappointment, I'll say. It looked to me as if uh, the Navy Department was afraid members of Congress would get too close and that they do not consider us expendable. It struck me as the most awe-inspiring and magnificent man-made spectacle I have ever seen in my life. It put me pretty much in mind of the uh, setting sun. It seemed like a huge, giant firecracker. back to Brooklyn. What do you think they were doing in Brooklyn at the time the atom bomb exploded? Well, if the Dodgers were playing today, I'm pretty sure they were out to see the bombs. The National Broadcasting Company interrupts all its programs to bring you a special broadcast. A few hours ago, the atomic bomb was dropped on the target fleet at Bikini. Aboard this vessel, which carries the scientific observers and United Nations representatives, there is, without a doubt, a keen sense of disappointment. Disappointment with what we witnessed this morning. It was a successful experiment, says the Army and Navy, but from 20 miles away, it was a pretty poor spectacle. Until I have seen the destruction measured by the various instruments and seeing the destruction itself, I want to reserve judgment as to whether or not I'm ready to abolish the Army and Navy and go to throwing atomic baseballs from here on. And we got our orders to go to ground zero. And when we went to ground zero, steaming in past the target ships, we saw um, various sights that went on because uh, some of the target ships were burned real bad. Some of them were, had holes in them. Uh, the ships were turned in every direction, the ones that were left. All the paint was removed from them, the gun barrels were twisted, the structures were twisted. And uh, by standing on the, on the top side, we went, I guess, within yards or so of all the target ships that was in the lagoon.
Many of the uh, officers aboard the flagship here are very optimistic now that uh, the first ABLE operation has gone off successfully and almost exactly on time. They are very optimistic about the Baker test. As a matter of fact, I've heard a number of the men say that they believe Baker will go off on or about July 22nd, which gives just exactly three weeks. That was Admiral Blandy's original statement, that if everything went off satisfactorily, then within three weeks, Baker should come about. During this whole time, uh, uh, from uh, July the 1st through the 24th, uh, there really wasn't uh, too much in restrictions again. So we, uh, by being so hot, we slept on top deck, uh, slept any place we could find. Maybe it would cool off early in the morning sometime. We'd catch a, a few winks at the time if we wasn't on duty. So this is how we spent our whole time aboard ship those 24 days there until the second test that we had. I don't recall uh, during the whole time I was there that any words or uh, long uh, radioactivity had been spoken of uh, to us, uh, the crew members I'm talking about. They may have used the word radioactive up in the higher class, up in the officers, and so I wasn't an officer, so I was an enlisted man, so uh, we were never told about any radioactive exposure or anything that way. In fact, we didn't really know what the word was. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Austin Finger reporting, reporting to you from the tiny isle of Longerique, deep in the central Pacific Ocean, some halfway between the Orient and the mainland of the United States. Here we are on the tiny isle where the natives of Bikini have been evacuated. They're homesick. They've only been here for a short while, but they're glad to stay, although they don't understand the world of nuclear energy any more than we do. And though they have no way of understanding what the test is all about. Longerick itself lies some 200 miles almost due north of the main island of Kwajalein. Out here in the peaceful Pacific, where the natives sit in their courtesy and in their friendliness, with their smiles and with their happiness, they aren't sure exactly what the atom bomb means, but at least they admit it. sunshine sung to you in Marshallese, perhaps the top tune of the week, you might say, out here on the tiny isle of Rongarique. In a moment, Mutual and its affiliated stations will take you to Bikini, where Joint Task Force One has regrouped for the second time within a month, this time to set off the first underwater atom blast in the history of the world. The bomb will not start a chain reaction in the water, converting it all to gas, and letting all the ships on all the oceans drop down to the bottom. It will not blow out the bottom of the sea and let all the water run down the hole. It will not destroy gravity. I am not an atomic playboy, as one of my critics labeled me, exploding these bombs to satisfy my personal whim. The evacuated ruler of Bikini, King Judah, gets a front row seat at the bomb blast as he arrives aboard the Mount McKinley and is greeted by Admiral Blandy, Joint Task Force One Commander. When the final switches have been thrown, no one can stop it. The atomic bomb is about to Now it will sound weak. We do not know how it's going to sound, but 42,000 men here are watching. 
intensely awaiting that expiring time, all of the observers, 10 seconds, all of the observers ships are in position in the open sea. We're about 10 miles away. I can't see what I'm going to do. Sitting out there, apparently we were caught in what they call the downwind of this, and a lot of debris from fallout fell on top of the summoner. I was standing there and got a lot of mist, uh, little grits of sand, a little pieces of rock falling around, and they ordered a, what they call GQ, which is everybody go to the battle stations. <clears throat> we went down, and I had picked up a little rock on the way that had fell down, and I picked up a little rock and put it in my pocket. Didn't keep it very long, just, I guess I just threw it away. But, uh, well, again, within 10 hours after this uh, uh, test baker, we were at ground zero. Scene 36, take five. Doctor, what are we doing to protect our men at Bikini from possible harm? In contrast to the Japanese, none of our men will enter the area until it is considered radiologically safe. Colonel Stafford Warren will head a staff of eminent radiologists who, with the aid of delicate scientific instruments, will measure the amount of radiant energy that may be present. We are taking every precaution to be certain that no man is injured in any way as a result of this experiment. We didn't know anything what was going on and no one told us about anything, radiation or anything, uh, been exposed to anything. And we were really unconcerned about that because we were, uh, had gone aboard the target ships and we thought that was one of the greatest things that uh, there was on, on board there. We saw these men come in board ship and they had these Geiger counters with them and they were walking all over the ship. They had regular shoes on, but they had cloth pulled up over the shoes there that, uh, that they were walking around with. I still had on a pair of shorts and my tennis shoes and my, uh, I had a little t-shirt on with a sailor hat. And that's all the clothing that I had on me. Scientists have a compelling interest in these new experiments. Each time an atomic bomb explodes, theory is translated into startling reality. Today's records and figures make tomorrow's textbooks.
We went swimming in the water. A lot of dead fish around, but we went swimming in the water. This water was also used for pulling through water from the Bay of Lagoon there into the condensers of the ship to make our own drinking water. We used the water to wash our clothes with. We wasn't worried about it because they continued to tell us to not worry about any of this. It wouldn't uh, harm us and we wasn't in any danger whatsoever. To Washington comes Vice Admiral William H. P. Blandy. The man who directed the two atom bomb tests in Bikini Atoll is here to report. In his first statement to the press, the Admiral sounds a somewhat ominous note. The Bikini tests, especially the second test, which involved the explosion of an atomic bomb underwater, have proven that this bomb, as used in naval warfare, would be not only the most powerful, but the most insidious weapon ever used in history. I sincerely trust that a plan which is at the same time practical and acceptable to all nations can be devised to outlaw it. But if this is not done, at least Crossroads will have given the United States information to make it better prepared than any other nation on Earth for this type of warfare. Can <laughs> While we were on the uh, way back to Pearl Harbor, why I was mostly uh, taking uh, bed rest at the time. And when I got to um, Pearl Harbor, they had then transferred me to the uh, hospital there where many tests were performed on me. The summoner left and went on a, another tour and of course I remained in the hospital. And uh, 1947, while well, they gave me a medical discharge and sent me home. Um, my feet and legs were swollen only just a little bit Sometimes it prevented me from wearing my shoes, and I would, uh, I would uh, do as I was told to do. They told me to, if my feet started swelling on me, why well, they get in bed and elevate my feet and legs and swell would go down, which it did. And years went on, and this continued to go on and on, and and years went on through the 50s, and and but each time the swelling would get just a little bit worse. My right leg went down, but my left leg continued to get big, and it was swollen up um, uh, huge, uh, in the size of the waist of a man. And they had to, started cracking open on me, and, and they had to take it off because of the severity of the pain and the many open wounds that was on it. And that was in 77, March of 77. One year later, uh, uh, certainly right after that, the swelling began to go into my right leg. 
and it again the swelling wouldn't stop that time it continued to swell so severely that it literally bursted open uh, from my back of my knee all the way down to the ankle and at that time I, I was taken to the hospital and was uh, August of uh, 1978 my right leg was amputated below the knee immediately after the amputation of my right leg while in the hospital my left hand began to swell on me and they didn't have the answers for that either there's no question in my mind that of all the things that went on in Operation Crossroad was a, me, uh, it was a slow death from that time to this date. Not only me, but there's other thousands of men out there that may be even worse off than I am. There's so many thousands of those men that are dead now, and they don't really know what caused their death. search of science for the absolute weapon has reached fruition in this country. But we stand ready to destroy this instrument. Let us not deceive ourselves. We must select world peace or world destruction. Yeah, nice. 